Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be talking about how to create multiple threads by implementing runnable interface in Java programming language. So let's start with the introduction. So uh, before we start how to create uh, multiple threads. So first we need to understand what is thread. Thread is a lightweight process by which we can uh, we can create multitasking in one Java application. Uh, parallelly, we can execute uh, so many tasks by creating a uh, several multiple threads. So if you talk about threads, there are some threads lifecycle methods are there, lifecycle states are there. So for example, uh, we'll, uh, I'll talk about that later, lifecycle method. So in this uh, 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 in this session, we'll be in this slide, we'll be discussing about how we can create multiple threads by implementing a runnable interface. Okay. So this technique is actually a very easy techniques for creating a multiple threads. Uh, there is a predefined interface in Java called runnable interface. So this runnable interface, no need to import. It is already imported by java.lang package. And this interface has only one abstract method called run. The, the syntax of method is public void run method. This method you have to implement in a class. So what we have to do is we have to create a class by implementing runnable interface and we have to implement the run method. So there are, what is this run method? So run method introduces a concurrent thread into your program. Okay. So which is a main method of a newly created thread. So when you when you create a thread, if you want to give a task for the thread, uh, we have to write the logic inside a run method. So run method will be automatically called when the thread is getting executed. So when the thread will be executed by CPU, the run method will be uh, will be called and it will be executed immediately. So that is a process of run runnable interface okay so here i have a one example program how we can design a, a multi-threaded program by using implement by implementing runnable interface so first we need to create a class uh, some name we can give implements runnable interface so since we are implementing runnable interface we have to implement the run function public void run so here only we have to write the logic so whatever logic you want to perform uh, for the thread so you can write the logic here so this is the run method is a main method for a newly created thread, right? So one more thing you, you have to understand is whenever you run the Java application, one main thread will be started. Then main thread will be controlled by the main function. So main thread, main function is the entry point for the main thread. So from that only we are going to create a new threads. Okay. So once you design the class, the next step is we have to create the object for this class. My thread empty. This is the empty object new my thread we are creating object this object we have to assign to the thread instance so now let's see how we can create a thread so thread is actually created by using a thread class there is a predefined class called thread so we have to use this predefined class thread class and we have to pass the object which implement runnable interface okay so thread t1 equal to new thread within bracket we have to pass the object which implements runnable interface okay so that the thread knows which is a function to be called the t1 will know which is a uh, run function okay which is a task the thread will know come to know that which is a task should be executed when i am running so why how it is happening because of we are assigning this we are passing an empty object to this thread uh, constructor right then we have to start the thread instance when you start the thread only the thread will move from new state to runnable state okay so here you need to understand the life cycle of a thread class okay so uh, here we need to understand what is the use of start method the start method uh, used to uh, make the thread runnable ready to run okay ready to run and it will wait for the cpu for getting a chance once it gets a chance it will be executed okay so here you can see that uh, you can see the uh, purpose of start method thread class is used to start a newly created thread it will do this following task it will create a new thread it will start the new thread in the call stack mechanism and it will through move the new state it will move the thread from new state to runnable state runnable state means it's a ready state ready for running uh, execution ready for execution okay so when that thread gets a chance to execute it will call the run method automatically so that is a Thing you have to understand run method no need to call uh, manually it, it will be called automatically okay so here you need to understand the life cycle of uh, thread states also so initially the thread when you create an object for a thread you'll get it's in a new state when you call start method it becomes a runnable state 
runnable state is waiting for CPU. C, uh, CPU is here. Okay, in running state only it is using a CPU. So from runnable state it will move the, it will get the uh, the thread will be selected automatically randomly by CPU and it will be executed. So when the CPU select the thread, it will call run method. The run method will be called during running when the CPU uh, executing the thread. And also during execution, it can be uh, blocked also by using a sleep function or IO input and output, waiting for input and output. So there are block state also there. Okay. So this is a life cycle of a uh, thread states. So now we'll see one uh, example program how to create a multiple threads, how to create multiple threads using runnable interface. So I'm going to use Eclipse ID. In the Eclipse ID, I have created a project called Sample. So I have a sample project so inside this project i am going to create a example program so just go to that src folder right click add a new class example class with the main method okay so for creating a multiple threads no need to import any uh, packages so just we can create with a simple program we can create so here in this program we'll see how we can create a multiple threads so first we need to create a class we have to create a class called my thread implements runnable interface so we should use runnable interface so runnable interface is a predefined interface it has only one abstract method called public that we have to implement public void run so otherwise you'll get error here in this class right it is mandatory we should implement this run function so for testing purpose, I'll put one message here. Uh, thread is uh, running. Okay. So later we'll do more. Okay. So once you create the class, now we can create the object for the thread. So we have to create the object for this class. So just copy the class name, create one instance of this class. So this is a task object. Okay. Equal to new my thread. So this task object we have to pass to the thread. So thread, how will you create a thread? So to create a thread, we have to use a thread class. So we have to use thread class t1 new thread. So inside this new thread, we have to assign the task. So task is modeled in the my thread class, right? So we have to uh, pass the thread task object to this thread. Then t1 dot start, right? So when I run the program, you can see the thread will be started automatically and it will be executed and the run function is called automatically. Here you can see the output. Thread is running. Right. So here what you have to understand is run function is not called manually. It will be called by CPU processor when the thread is getting executed. So run function is the main place, uh, main, main function for uh, putting the logic for a thread, for writing a logic for a thread. Now let's see how to create a multiple threads. Okay, so to create a multiple threads, we need to uh, just repeat this process. Okay, so here I have created a T1, right? So similarly, create T2 object and start the T2 object. Okay, so now if I run, two threads will be started and it will be getting the output. So you look at this. Uh, one minute, I'll close the previous program outputs if it is running. Okay, so I'll run again. Yes, now look at this. Uh, the, if you notice that output, thread is running message we are getting two times, right? Why? Because two threads we have started. So like this, you can you can start uh, many times. You can uh, you can start uh, the thread. You can create ma many threads and you can activate the thread by calling start function. Okay, so this is actually way we can create multiple threads. If you want to create one more thread, we can write uh, t3 threads like that you can write okay and also uh, here the look at this output we are getting a same output right thread is running thread is running okay so suppose if you want to give a different task if you want to give a different task for the thread okay different task for the thread t1 i want to display good morning message and t2 i want to display a good afternoon message okay so two different tasks i want to perform so what you can do is we can give a name for the thread. So t1 dot set name. You can use set name for the t1 thread. So inside we can give a name. So this is the t1 thread. And for the t2 thread we can give t1 dot set 
name and we can give t2 as a name okay so once you give the t1 t2 this name we can access inside the running uh, during running when the thread is running we can access this name and we can give a different task okay to access the name inside run function first we have to uh, how to do that let's see how to do that first we have to create one variable to store the name of the thread so how to get the current running thread name so first we need to get the current trend current running thread instance so for that you have to call thread dot current thread method then you have to call put a dot function called get name function so it will give a current running thread name now we can put a if condition and you can compare equal using equals function you can compare if it is a thread 1 t1 we can execute one task for example if it is t1 we can execute like this we can say that good morning and if if the thread is else if you can use else if condition if the thread is another name for example equals of the thread is t2 okay so we can we can display another uh, we can do another task for example good afternoon okay okay so here we have created a two threads t1 and t2 and t1 dot set name t1 t1 dot start t2 dot set name t2 and t2 dot start right so we have given two different names so based on the two different name we are giving a different task okay so we'll execute this program now look at this we are giving a we are getting a two different task output good morning message and good afternoon message right so this is about how to create a, a multiple threads uh, with a, a different task sometimes you want to block the thread suppose if you want to uh, display good morning message five times with a delay of one second or two seconds similarly good afternoon message you want to print three times with a uh, delay of one second or two seconds okay so that is actually part of uh, this stage like right? for example sometimes you can block the thread by calling a sleep function there is a sleep function is there so using sleep function we can block the thread so voluntarily if you want to block we can block the thread so let's see how to do that right so for example good morning message i want to print three times uh, but with a delay of one second right so what you can do is we can run a for loop three times we need right so we can run a for loop int i is equal to uh, one i less than or equal to three so three times i want to print good morning message i plus plus so inside this uh, for loop uh, we'll print the message what is the message is good morning right so good morning message so after printing good morning message i want to block the thread for one second right so how to do that we have to use a sleep method the sleep method throw one exception called interrupt exception so we have to call using a try catch block okay so use try dot sleep inside uh, let's see let us assume that one second okay so one second means you have to give thousand milliseconds so here this function will consider as a millisecond so you have to give thousand the error message if you have uh, we can display the error message also okay so now uh, this thread the t1 thread will print good morning message three times with a delay of one second okay so the sleep method will stop the thread for one second during that time another thread will be getting a chance right so another thread is t2 is there right so another thread will be executing right so now coming to the another thread the another thread also i want to print uh, the another thread uh, five times okay for example i've seen that five times so we'll create a for loop five times one two five times good afternoon message i want to display okay so uh, equal to five i plus plus okay so now uh, here i want to print good afternoon so instead of good good morning i want to print good afternoon okay so right so now look at this after printing good afternoon we need a sleep method so we will copy this code and we need that need to include that and uh, instead of one second we can do it two second first we'll see the one second output how it is okay so this is about how to block the thread for one second delay and how to give a chance to another thread
for example here two threads are there t1 and t2 threads are there right so when t1 is sleeping for one second the t2 will come and execute one or two times that we cannot predict it may execute one time or two times okay similarly when t2 is sleeping t1 will execute one or two times okay so like this you will get a multi-task environment you'll be getting a multitasking using uh, the multi-threading concept using runnable interface okay so in this program what is actually the uh, aim of this uh, this particular objective of this video is to learn how to create multiple threads using runnable interface so i have explained how to create two threads with the two different name and how to give a different task by comparing the name of the thread okay and also i have explained how to give a, a suspend time right how to suspend a thread by using thread dot sleep method okay so now uh, let's see how uh, how the output is coming i'll close this and execute the program okay once again now look at this good morning message good afternoon message it's coming uh, with one second delay for example first time it is uh, telling good morning after telling good morning good afternoon is coming because that t1 thread is waiting for one second right so during that time the another thread is executing good afternoon Similarly, the uh, after printing good afternoon, that T1, T2 thread is sleeping for one second. So, the next thread is coming and doing the job. Okay. So, uh, similarly, when you run again, it may, you may get different output. Okay. Look at this different output. The good morning message is printing only one time. After that, uh, during that one, one second delay, the good afternoon thread is printing doing the job two times okay so we cannot predict in one second it can do two two tasks or three tasks okay similarly that uh, the waiting the sleeping thread is coming back and it is printing good morning message okay so like this two thread is sharing the cpu and when one thread is suspended blocked another thread will be executing when one another thread is blocked another this uh, previous thread will be executing okay so you'll be getting a, a multitasking environment with with uh, more cpu utilization so that is the purpose of creating multi-threaded programming